Jesus. There is no one else. 
praise tonight. We bless your name, Jesus. You are great. You are a miracle walking God. Hallelujah. And tonight, this very moment, oh God, it's no different. You are, you are, you are great. You do miracles, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Oh God, your presence is so rich. Your anointing is so powerful. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. You are God. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that you can show up in our presence. We thank you, Lord, that you can come and abide in our presence, oh God. Oh Lord, in spite of who we are, Lord, in spite of our condition, you who are holy and righteous, you who are supernatural, oh God, and sovereign, oh God, you have chosen to come, dwell among us, Lord, and in us, Lord, and put your spirit upon us, Lord. We are thankful tonight, Lord. As humble vessels, oh God, we open our hearts to receive your presence and your anointing, oh God, for your power is present to heal, your power is present to deliver, your power is present to set free, your power is present to bring conviction, your power is present, oh God, to set every captive free and loose every mind and break every bondage and break every shackle. Oh God, we thank you for your liberation tonight. Oh God, you are able. You are able to deliver this body from sickness and disease. You are God who do great miracles and mighty works, oh God. We accept you. We receive you, Lord. We thank you for this connection we have with you today. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God. And make it possible. Who is making it possible, Lord. For without you, Holy Spirit, we can do nothing. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for drawing us nearer and nearer to Him, bringing us closer to God, bonding our hearts together. We thank you for only the anointing can destroy the yoke. Only the anointing can make a difference in our lives, oh God. And we thank you for in it, in it we live and move and have our being. For we cannot breathe without it, we cannot live without it, we cannot talk without it, we cannot do anything without it, oh God. We thank you for your anointing today. Give us a strength and determination to function. We give you praise and glory and honor. And all God's people said, Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Clap your hands and shout a good hallelujah to Him tonight. Come on, shout a long hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. To God be the glory. Thank you for your presence. The breakthroughs. The devil is a liar. God, we choose to bless you and worship you in spite of, irrespective of whatever challenges we face. Our only hope is to stay connected to you, Lord. Stay connected, stay plugged in, no matter what. Oh God, for you, we are the branches, you are the vine, we are the branches. We want to stay connected, Lord, to be fruitful. Amen? Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, Stay connected. Don't lose your connection. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. The Lord bless you. You can have your seats tonight. Praise His wonderful name. Glory to God. And a pleasant good evening. And welcome into the presence of the Lord tonight. I'm sure His presence is here tonight. I said, surely His presence is here tonight. Amen. And glorious presence. How many of you can feel His presence tonight? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands and say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And you can talk to the Holy Spirit like you talk to anybody. Because he's a real person. A real person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As soon as we could get these platform associates well, settled down. All right. Glory to God. Amen. All right. You glad you're in church tonight? What a privilege it, what a, what a privilege it is to be back in the house of the Lord tonight. And tonight, we're just going to trust God to just encourage us and strengthen us as we perform one of the most sacred acts of Christianity. This is so powerful. We here have learned and we have understood how important this act is today. How many of you thank God for healing in your body? Oh, here it is. I mean, this is to, to confirm our healing and 
and thanking God for all that he has done for us. Amen. Through his blood, his shed, shed blood and his broken body. And is, is how important it is for us to discern the Lord's body tonight. But before we get into this, I just want to um, capture your mind for a moment and get you to focus on what God's mandate, mandate is, is upon our life. And so you can re, 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 reset your spiritual um, machine to do the will of God. Amen. Reset the computer of your mind to do the will of God. Praise the Lord for those of you who have joined us tonight. Thank you for doing so wherever you are. It's a privilege and an honor to be able to minister to you in whatever way, in whatever capacity, and in the simplicity, I trust the Lord will bless you. Tonight we have in communion, wherever you are, you can get the fruit of the vine and a piece of bread, and we will have communion together and enjoy the Lord's Supper and remember Him and receive all the benefits of discerning the Lord's body. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Let's put our hands together and welcome our local, regional, and national audience. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to quickly get your Bibles out. And I just want to share something very quickly. I'm not going to be, be uh, it's not going to be so intense. Um, just a quick thought. I want to, just want to draw your attention to, I believe, that God wants And uh, how many enjoyed service this morning? Yeah. Awesome service this morning. Praise the Lord. And uh, there's plenty where that came from. And I want you to prepare for that leadership, our, lead, our leadership conference that is coming up. It's going to be powerful. Yeah. Trust me, it's going to be powerful. All right? It's two hour sessions. And it's nine sessions, so it's powerful. Okay, I said nine sessions because it's nine lessons I want to give to you. And when you're through with all nine lessons, you get a certificate, all right? All right, but you must do all nine lessons. You have to do complete 18 hours. And if you do nine, and 17 hours and 59 minutes, you wouldn't get it. All right, I want you to turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 5, and I'm not preaching this morning, I, I'm this evening, so um, don't, don't, don't um, expect any preaching. I just want to share uh, uh, a couple of things with you. Um, we're going to get into communion in a minute. Uh, this will just take me a couple minutes, just a few thoughts with you. Um, never forget that... We're living in a world that is desperate. We're living in a very desperate world. And I'm talking about serious desperation. And people are desperate in many, many ways. Many ways. People are desperate for God. People are desperate for food. People are desperate for money. People are desperate for life. People are desperate for oxygen. They're desperate. People are desperate for all different kind of things. But there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a, a major need. There's a, there's a need that we must never um, fail to observe. A very important need. And it is a need that Jesus saw. It's what Jesus saw that we must see through his eyes. And when you see it through his eyes, you'll think with his thoughts, Amen. You will hear with his ears and you will work with your hands and go with your feet. And you'll present your body a living sacrifice unto God to be used to do the perfect, acceptable will of God. So here is the thing, church. How many of you are saved? Say amen. amen. We have a job to do. All of us. We have a job to do and it is required of us. It's not an option. It's a job, it's not an option, it's a command. A command leaves no option. And you know what a command is? If you're in the army or in the military, you don't disobey a command. You can be court martial and, 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 and you can go to jail for that and be penalized for that. You don't disobey an order or a command. There's no option. You go, you go. 
And God has given us a command. And we have to, uh, we have to be, we must, we must be actively involved in fulfilling that command. And don't ever ignore it. And this is what we have to pay attention to because there is a, there is a, a cry in our nation and in the nations of the world. And here is a story where Jesus saw certain things and the very things he saw is so relevant today. All right? Very relevant today. In Luke chapter 5, here it is. What did Jesus saw back then? What he saw back then that we need to see today? In verse 1, he said, And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, as the people pressed upon him or throng him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. What the people were doing? Pressing. They were trying to get close to him to hear the word of God. There are six things here I want to show you. Number one is the hunger of the world. The hunger of the world. Jesus saw the hunger of the world. The people pressed upon him to what? Hear the word. If you pay particular attention in your environment, you'll find somebody who is interested in hearing what you have to say. As long as Jesus is living in your heart, as long as Jesus is evidently living in your life, people are going to want something you have to offer. Trust me. As long as Christ dwells in you, and I shared with you recently, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hmm? And that's the hope you want. Now, as much as we have a lot of negative things out there against Christianity, there are those who are hungry for God. But you know what they want? They want the truth. They want the truth. They want the truth. They're hungry for God. So if you notice, don't ever let this go unnoticed. Look out for where there is a hunger for the word and make sure you have the word ready for them. Yeah. Amen? And the Bible tells us, he saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing the, their nets. Notice, he saw two ships standing by the lake, two ships standing idle and empty, no fishermen. The ship standing what? Keep this, li these little things in the back of your mind because this is what we need to remember, okay? First, we see there was a hunger for the word. People were all around him, and in the process, he noticed two ships. So he couldn't get, you have to picture this now, by the lake. He was standing by the lake. And they were thronging on him. They would have pushed him in this, in the, into the lake. So he had no choice but get into the ship. Stand in the ship. And from the ship, he was able to preach to the crowd. You understand that? Okay? When you go baptism, Pastor Kenry stand up there, he's talking to you, and everybody going close to him and trying to push him, and he's he backing up to the lake. And next thing you know, he ended up looking for somebody to stand up on because people coming at him. They were so hungry for the word. And they wanted to hear what he had to say. Because what he had to say they, kn they, they knew in their heart that whatever he has to say will benefit them. And they wanted to hear what it is, so they had a hope that what he says is going to help them. So he backed up and he stood on the empty boat that was there so he could, uh, you know, address the crowd. Okay? He could address the crowd. And, and here is the Bible tells he entered, he entered the one of, of the ship, which was Simon, that was Peter's, and, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, back out a little bit so he could get the attention of the crowd. And he sat down, and what he did? He taught the people out of the ship. He taught the people out of the ship. Now, if you want to use an analogy here, you can say, okay, here it is. Here, we are in the ship right now. All of us are in the ship now. The boat here. So here it is. He saw empty boats. Empty boats are like churches. 
Empty booths are like churches. You know, you know, if you notice now, you see some, a lot of emptiness here. And we need to fill it up. All right? And the boat was standing there idle. What? There was something that's supposed to be in the boat. <laughs> but you see, there is, there will be no fish if there is no fishermen. So there are people that are supposed to be here. Because you're down in the, at the end of the story, you just hear what he says. The same, the whole story said, from now on, you will not be make, catching fish. You'll be catching men. Because that's what the whole point he was trying to draw down to. So the whole thing I want you to see, there was a hunger for the word. People were coming. And there were empty boats and no fishermen. So Jesus went there. And guess, let's, let's go with this story. I love it. Yeah? So like these ships, churches are empty and barren. Just like the ship, empty and barren and abandoned. So you have to allow the Lord to occupy the boat. N notice something. Jesus went in the boat. When Jesus is in the boat, something's going to happen. When Jesus is in the church, things are going to happen. Are you listening to me? When Jesus is in the boat, there's going to be a big difference with the catch. Watch this now. Watch this. So the first thing, there was a hunger for the word, right? The word is what people need out there. And secondly, he saw not only the hunger for the word, but he saw empty boats, which are like empty churches. And the third thing he saw, he saw multitude of fishes. He saw multitude of fishes. Look at verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep. Why would he say launch out into the deep? Because he saw fishes. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for the draw or for the catch. Let down your nets. Watch this. He saw fishes, multitude of fishes. And what he saw, Peter couldn't see. What Jesus saw, nobody else could have seen. And, uh, and look what he says. Look what he says. And verse 5, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, and you have to picture the scenario and picture how it was done. Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing, no catch. When Peter said that, Peter almost missed his miracle. Watch this, you know. He almost missed his miracle because of apathy and past discouragement. Let me say it again. He almost missed his miracle because of apathy and past discouragement. Because he went and toiled and toiled and toiled, caught nothing, he was discouraged. Can you see that there? He was discouraged. And he said, well, look, based on that discouragement, he said, you know what? We have toiled all night and cast nothing, but you know what? Nevertheless. So he almost missed it. Almost missed it. And most Christians live in discouragement of past attempts. I want to say it again. Most Christians live in discouragement because of past attempts. And things didn't work out in your evangelistic style. And you say, you know what, I'm, this is not my calling, this is not my ministry, this is not for me to do because people, you know. And you get discouraged. Not only that, in a lot of things in, the, in your life itself that gets you discouraged in your past experience. But God wants to do a new thing in your life. Nothing can stop it. Okay, when God wants to do anything like not going to stop it. And here we see, and he said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the nets. Now, I believe there were other fishermen there. There were a lot of fishermen there. Okay? Not just Peter. Peter was just a selected one. All right? So he was talking to a lot of fishermen. And he says, and a lot of people there. Okay? And uh, that had needs. Right? He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the nets. Can you imagine? No, 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 notice what he said, I'll let down the net, and not nets. Jesus already told him in, the, in, the, in the, uh, uh, the verse prior to that, that you need to go and let down your nets. All right? But he said, I'll let down thy nets. So again, right there, he limited the Lord. So he said, at thy word. So what they all wanted in the crowd, what they all wanted was to hear what Jesus had to say, a word. And that was a word. Go let down your net, these fishermen. So number one, he, there was, there was, he saw the hunger for the word, the hunger of the world for the word. And then he saw, Jesus saw the empty boats at churches. 
Then he, thought, then he saw uh, the multitude of fishes. And then he saw, what he saw also was empty nets. Empty nets. Okay? Empty nets. And so, what, look what, let's go on. And when they had thus done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes. So they went and did likewise, the story says. And they, 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 they catch a great multitude of fishes. And their net break. And their net break. Now, now, now there, is, there is something significant here. Multitudes and multiply. We see the multitude multiply. Multitude of fishes multiply to the point where the net couldn't hold the capacity of the catch. Why? Because they let down the net and not the nets. Let's learn to take the limit off of God. When God speaks, there is, he said he's able to exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. So each one of us, each individual, you may have a net, but together we all have nets. God is saying, listen carefully, he doesn't want you alone to go and cast your net. All of us have to go and cast our nets. Can that sink in a little bit? Which means every one of us need to be involved in this. I don't care, your age has nothing to do with it. You can minister to anybody. As long as you are a human being, you communicate with other human beings. Whether by phone or any, and you need to speak a word into their lives. So make sure you do that. Uh, but look what he saw. Number one, he saw the hunger for the word. And you can build on this. I've just given you the, 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 the thoughts as they come. He saw the hunger for the word, the hunger of the world for the word. Number two, he saw an empty boats like churches that are empty today. And number three, he saw multitude of fishes, a lot of people in the world that need to be saved. A lot of people in the world that need to be saved, like fishes, need to be saved, need to be caught. And we have people in the church with nets in their hands. And when you look at everybody together, there are so many nets that need to be thrown out there to make the catch. We have to do it together, collectively. And number five, he saw not only that, but he saw discouraged fishermen. He saw, he saw discouraged fishermen. And you see that in verse 5. Peter was discouraged. Okay? But then verse 7 he says, And they beckoned unto their partners. It was so full. They beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. How many churches need to collaborate with other churches? Men from this ship wanted help from the other ship. Amen. That means we ought to work together as a team. We are one body in Christ. All right? That's why when you have a crusade, you know, invite other churches to participate and help because all of us have to get involved in this catch. We need help to catch the fishes. One church cannot do it. So here they call for help. Partners, which were in the other ship. In this case, you can say like the other church. And they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships. Both ships. Amen. All the churches can be f filled up today. Amen. Till the ship start to sink. The ship was overloaded. And what you do when a ship is overloaded? You take some of the ship. That's when you start getting, you put some, you take off some of the stuff and put it on another ship. That's when you start planting other churches. Starting other ministry, all post ministry. Because everybody can't fit here. If everybody gets saved in this community, they can't fit in this church. We'll just start something down the road. And then we have to take you and place you there. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's when you are sent. Amen? Amen. You're sent from a launching platform. Well, let's go out further. And so here it is. So when Simon Peter saw it, when he saw the massive transformation that took place because Jesus entered the boat, spoke a word, they obeyed his word, they made this big catch, the net was full and breaking, and they had other empty nets that could have been filled up also. He saw it, he was so convinced and pricked in his heart. He saw the blessings of God at that point in time, the man was not saved. Peter was not saved. He was a sinner. And he saw it. When Peter saw it, look what he did. He saw it, 
and he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man, O Lord. What he did, he repented. Listen to me. You know what caused Peter to repent as a fisherman? You see, watch this, folks, and don't ever forget this, okay? Remember, Pastor Moving Church with this. People repent because of the blessings. Repentance don't come first and blessings after. Blessing comes first and then repentance after. What came first? Repentance or blessing? What happened to Peter? What led Peter to repent? The goodness of God led us to repentance. That was the goodness of God. The blessings of God comes first. When you check, when you hear the gospel preached to you, you're a sinner, you're wicked, you're notorious, you're a vagabond, a rogue, and you hear, a wretched sinner, and you hear, the, you, hear, you hear this gospel, you're hearing this gospel preaching to you, you don't realize, wow, is that what Jesus did for me while I am in this condition? He did that for me? I am so blessed and I don't even know it? Huh? You know that's what that's the condition of the world. They're so blessed and they don't even know it. You have to go and tell them how blessed they are. They are so this is why God says he poured the rain upon the just and the unjust, you know. They are unjust. They don't know how blessed they are. God already blessed the world by giving him giving the world his son to die on the cross while they were yet sinners. Christ died. That's the greatest blessing the world has ever gotten. And that blessing led to repentance. This is why he said, when you know the truth, the truth will make you free. It is the goodness of God that leads the lead to repentance. And that's another story by itself, but I'll give you something to think about. So when Simon Peter saw the blessings of God, he fell down at the feet, fell down at Jesus' at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. For he was astonished at all that were in with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And watch this. And the son of James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, for henceforth thou shalt catch men. So the whole analogy of this truth was to get you and I to understand, and those men to understand, is not just about catching fish. I am here not just for you to catch fish there. But I'm here so you can hear what I have to say and go and catch men. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. If we can understand that and see what Jesus, if you can see what Jesus saw through his eyes, the hunger for the word, the hunger of the world for the word, number one. He saw the empty boats, the churches. Number two, he saw the multitude of fishes. And I want you leaders to build on this, okay? Number four, he saw empty nets. Number five, he saw discouraged fishermen. And number six, what he did, he challenged the disciples to go at his word. What he, what he did, he ch challenged his disciples to go at his word. Look at verse five again. He said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. So they were so challenged, they took his word. So when you see people discouraged, you challenge them with the word of God. Yeah. Amen. He was so challenged. In fact, Jesus challenged the disciples to go at his word. I like that. He said, fear not. From henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. Watch this now. That was the day when they decide, you know what? From now on, he said, he's going to make us fishers of men. You know what? They didn't question that. They brought the ship to shore, to land. They anchored their boat, took the fish, all the fish out of the boat. And guess what they say? You see, they say, from now on, we're going to follow this leader. And they followed Jesus. And guess what they did? They went and they made fishers of men. Amen. That is what we have to do, church. I thought I'd drop in that little nugget to you today. Did you enjoy that? Yeah? And, and based on what I said this morning is that we have to have a strong discernment. 
you know, these men right there, you know what they did? They connected to Jesus. That draw a fish and what they saw, the blessing they saw, connected them to Jesus. And from that moment, they'll never, never miss their connection. Now, now listen to me. Even though they forsook him, even though they all denied him, they knew in their heart that what they denied was the truth. For fear, they did it. And Jesus knew that. And Jesus didn't penalize them for that. When all of them abandoned him and left, one person said to him, um, he said to the person that left, he said, are you going to leave too? And he said, no, to whom shall I go? You have the words, or the word, he said, the word. Generalize everything into one. The word, you have the word of life. You understand? You don't disconnect from the word of life. Amen. Never. The day you disconnect from the word of life, you're dead. Spiritually dead. So, so you stay connected. And let me just give you a, a quick, quick scripture. Go back to, to Matthew chapter 10, um, where we were this morning. Um, and let me show you something quickly. You don't want to disconnect from that because there's a principle here. There's a principle here. Jesus taught his disciples um, how, to, how to discern connection and disconnection. When you are connected, when you are connected, you will discern people who are disconnected. I want to say it again because you missed it because I know you're turning the pages and you're not listening to what I'm saying. When you are connected, you will discern people who are disconnected. And when you, are, when you who are connected discern somebody who is disconnected, then you disconnect yourself from them. Okay, let me prove it to you. You look at me like I'm a foreigner, an alien just dropped from the sky. M Matthew chapter 10, verses 14. You say, I am connected. If you are connected and you find people who do not want to be connected to what you are connected to, this is what you do. And whosoever shall not receive you. Okay, he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, go and make fishes of men, right? Okay. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words. When you, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. You know why? Because they reject, just like they rejected in Capernaum and in Samaria. They rejected Jesus. The nation rejected Jesus and disconnected themselves. And when you meet people who just want to put up a fight with you and argue with you and debate with you and want to correct you and put, perse persecute you and be, say all manner of evil against you, you just have to discern when to dust your feet and where to dust your feet and go in another direction because God has given you the word of life and wherever you go, the Bible says, if they reject you, they reject me. So you go and you make fishes of men. So discern people who are disconnecting themselves and rejecting your message and rejecting you because you are connected to Jesus. He said, because you are connected to me, they re because you are connected to me, they are going to reject you. And when they reject you, they reject me. And if they reject me, they reject the one who sent me. Amen. If they reject you, they reject the one who sent you. So you're going to have it both ways. You're going to have people who are hungry for the word of God and they have those who will reject you and debate you on your job and they'll have some religious debates. And by the way, 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 I'm going to be doing some things this year, very soon, maybe from next, well, I want to do so much, God help me. I'll be teaching you how to deal with Jehovah's Witnesses. I'll be teaching you how to deal with Seventh-day Adventists. I'll be teaching you how to deal with uh, Mormons, Latter-day Saints, Hindus and Muslims in evangelism. Would you want that? Amen. I'll show you what they believe and what we believe. And you compare it and you go after them. You hear what I said? Go after them. Because that's where we are right now. It's not just like before. Now they, they have questions for you. And you better know your Bible. If you don't know the Bible, they will, they will mess you up big time. Because Satan is taking notes and he's studying how to counteract you. Amen? I'll show you how these cults are working. Okay? Is it, uh, 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 uh. We'll be dealing with religions and cults and, you know, Christianity, cults and religion. These three things we'll be dealing with, right? Christianity, cults and religion. You want to you wanna, you wanna get into that study? I don't think you want to miss that because I myself don't want to miss it. <laughs> no, I have it ready for you. Okay? I just have to just... Teach, teach you that, okay? 
We need that in the church now. So we're going to be coming here and shut down everything and just start 6 o'clock and get right, in, right into the Word. Okay? That will happen anytime. I'm get into that Word study. I'm going to get your notebook and your notepads out, and we're going to just start doing that, all right? We, we're changing the whole system. I'm going to change the way things are operating now. We, 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 it's no traditional way again. We go to move by the way the Holy Spirit wants us to go and get things done. We can have work to do. We have work to do. We have work to do, and we need to know how to get it done. I can't just come here and tell you how to get received every Sunday morning and how to get this. We're going to put things right. Like I told you this morning, get connected. Amen. Plugged in. Amen. And what I told you Wednesday night, what I told you last Sunday, it's so okay you forget. <laughs> God help me, Lord. Anyway, the whole idea is that God is taking it to a new dimension of knowledge in 2017. You will be so amazed. And also, he's going to take us to higher heights and deeper depths and new revelation. And he's going to prepare you for the onslaught that is coming and the most bloodiest war that will ever, ever take place in the history of the world. That war is coming and the, how the turning of the tide is, is happening all over the world. I'm going to show you what is the objective of Islam and what they're going to do to the Western world, especially starting in America, and what effect... Oh, God, let me not get into all of that right now. What effect this president is going to have... What is going to happen with all of this that's going on right now? And you can't go about business as usual. And, you know, you know, you know, no, no. It's time for you to pick up the hammer and nails and start building. Amen? Amen. All right. So this is it. Jesus taught his disciples how to discern when people are disconnected. And when they are disconnected, don't waste time with people who want to remain disconnected. Amen? Amen. Okay. The principle here is this. Never expect. Never expect. A 16 by 20, if you, 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 a 16 by 20 mine, never expect that to fit in a 3 by 5 mine. Okay, let me put it this way. If you have a 16 by 20 idea in your heart, I have a 16 by 20. You know what 16 by 20? 16 by 20. You have a 16 by 20 idea, so big, right? And I come to him who have a 3 by 5 idea. Or a 3 by 5 mine. Don't expect your 60 by 20 idea to fit in a 3 by 5 mine. You understand that? Yeah. That's the principle of that verse you just read there. Okay? So you're going to find people who do not support your ideology. Who do not support your philosophy. Who do not support your belief system. Who do not support the word that you're bringing to them. Who do not support the Bible. And they'll reject you and they'll want to fight you. Don't waste time trying to fit a 16 by 20 idea in somebody who is a 3 by 5 you'll be wasting your time it's never going to happen it will never happen you try it take a big box so and try to put it in a small box or say amen Zevna. <laughs> I finish you know <laughs> finish praise the Lord let's all stand glory to God glory to God that's good preaching you enjoy that Wow, that was fire and brimstone. Goodness gracious. Woo, pastor, you preach your heart out there. <laughs> Let's all stand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A word spoken in due season, how pleasant it is. In its simplicity, it's powerful. It's powerful. All right? So lift your hands and thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and thank Him. Bless the Lord. O my soul and all that is within me, Bless his holy name, for he has done great things. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. My soul and all that is within me, that is within me, bless your holy name. Sing it, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, and all, and all, and all.
we decree and proclaim that we are here. And as we eat this bread, we are proclaiming to each other today that we are here. We are here. We are here. We, you take all our bad things, all the bad things in our body, you take it away and we receive all the good things in your body. Oh God, we thank you for giving us this privilege to access, to access our blessings and to receive it by faith as your people come to partake, Lord. As they pick it up, Lord, the moment they pick it up, Lord, begin the process of healing in the body and the cleansing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, come and receive. Jesus name. Thank you Lord. Lord I praise you. Lord I give you praise. Lord come quickly, I come quickly, come quickly from the back. Come quickly. Concentrate and in discerning the Lord's body. As I remind you, what Paul says to the church at Corinth, he says, For I have received of the Lord 
that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Verse 27 says, Wherefore, whosoever eat, of, eat this bread and drinketh this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For which cause, he says, for this cause, not this only Lord, Lord's body, for this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. But if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So, if by not discerning the Lord's body, people are weak and sick, and people sleep, then we discern the Lord's body tonight, we are going to be strong, healthy, and live long. In Jesus' name. So take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. We eat of his body in exchange for what his body has as he take away all the bad things from our body. Let's receive it now by faith. Be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And all the people eat and say amen. Amen. After the same manner, he also took the cup. When he had stopped saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do shew the Lord's death till he comes beloved remember he drank first he drank first and then he gave it I said now you drink and he said in another place I will not drink with you until that day in heaven at the great marriage supper when he shall have the consummation of the marriage relationship what a day what a glorious day that will be. In the meantime, let us share his cup with hope and faith. Hallelujah. With hope and faith and with that eternal bliss in mind. And to remain walking in a close relationship with him. Remembering how blessed we are with healthy bodies, healthy mind, and a cleansed spirit. We are cleansed, washed, and purified consecrated and sanctified all for the master's use father thank you as we drink of this cup now we do it in remembrance of our lord and savior jesus christ shall we together drink he all of it in jesus name and say amen amen praise the lord to god be the glory God be the glory. Confess now, I am healed. I am cleansed. I am washed. I am redeemed. I am rejuvenated. Hallelujah. I am righteous. I am God's child. I can cry, Abba, Father. We are God's children. We are God's children. Just give Him praise for what we have benefited. All the benefits. I am forgiven. 
I have held, I am redeemed. My mouth is satisfied with good things. Hallelujah, I'm blessed with His mercy and kindness. My youth is renewed like an eagle. I will dwell in the secret place of the Most High. I shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's my pavilion. He's my hiding place. He's my rock. He's my refuge. He is my Savior, my Lord, my Redeemer, my Lover. He is my eternal hope. He is everything to me. I am blessed, 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 blessed. I thank you, Father. I give you praise. My soul shall make a boast in thee. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. While I live and have my being, I give you praise, O oh God. Thank you, Father, for this communion. Thank you for everyone who came by faith to participate, Lord, and receive a renewed strength in your body, Lord. Let your healing power flow in the mighty name of Jesus and help us to enjoy good health and happiness and enjoy your family and peace. It was a wonderful week, a wonderful week, Lord, where we shall make known your word and the gospel. Use us, Lord, to see to see the need, Lord. Use us, O oh God, to see the emptiness in the church. Use us to see, O oh God, men and women who are discouraged. Use us to see, O oh God, what's happening around us, Lord, and we can attend to it and resolve the situations and bring men closer to you. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Help us to go this week and cast our nets, Lord, and receive our cast, Lord. Bring people to church. Bring them to the kingdom of God. Lead men and women, O oh God, in the right direction. Whatever we can do, Whatever our hands find it to do, Lord, whatever our mouth can say to make a be a blessing to somebody, wherever our feet can walk and go, oh God, use us as we present and submit our bodies to you, Lord. Bless your people and every member, Lord, in this house and everyone that's watching, Lord. Use us, the church, and make us fishers of men, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, as all of you rejoice and say amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand if we praise. Praise the Lord. God be the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Did you enjoy that tonight? You feel blessed? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, don't forget Wednesday night, we'll be back here for our Wednesday night midweek service. And uh, I'll use it for the Friday night. All right? But you got that? Oh, no use on Friday. Friday's what? It's still Friday night. Okay. All right, okay, so next week is carnival. Next week is carnival. Okay, so we'll next Sunday morning. All right? See you, see, you, see you Wednesday night. All right? Pray for me, okay? Pray for me this week. I got a lot of things to do this week, a lot of work to do this week in compilation for this conference that's going up. It's nine sessions, my goodness. And nine sessions for that conference, and nine sessions for our conference. That's 18, 18 sessions. So a lot, of, a lot of work. I'm doing a lot of work right now, putting things together. Okay? Pray for me, all right? My mind sometimes get tired. What day today is? See, I told him my mind to get tired. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you officially dismiss. Don't go with the cups, okay? We need them. Okay, Sister Katian would like to see all the deacons. Make sure you're looking good. All the deacons, Sister Katian would like to see you. Make sure you're looking good. Before you go, all right? But you understand that? All the deacons say amen. Sister Katian would like to see you. Make sure you powder your face look good. 